This is just a small explanation of what happens in the structure of the water in hydrophilic and hydrophobic surfaces. Brief introduction is about the water itself. It's two molecules of hydrogen and one of oxygen, which due to its structure makes it a polar molecule. This means that one end is negatively charged, the other end will be positively charged. It's due to this molecular structure that, upon freezing, it will assume that configuration which makes it less dense in ice form than in its liquid form. Not only we have polar interaction, but also what it is called hydrogen bridge. This is a particular type of chemical bonding, which happens mostly between hydrogen and other atoms. On the surface of a material we may have Lewis sites. These are points where the water molecules may connect, like if they were connected to themselves. In this case, the structure of the water will be random. This will give lower contact angles. However, if we don't have these Lewis sites, in order to minimize its energy, water will assume a nice structure on a few angstroms on the surface of the material. This will give very high contact angles. It's mainly due to this shift in structure that makes the water droplet forms a, almost a sphere or simply spread across the surface. Some windshields do have an hydrophobic protection so that water droplets will simply flow away instead of spreading and forming a water film. However, this transition is not abrupt. It's over one interval, which actually the water will not know if it wants to form that ice structure film or if it simply wants to spread across the surface. And this transition point is called the Berg limit, which is around the 55 degrees in water contact angle. This will be extremely important for other later reactions. One point where we may see that is in biomaterial surfaces. If it is truly hydrophilic, if one, mol if one protein by accident touches the surface, it will be competing with water. And water will mostly not give it enough time to adhere to the surface, to have any kind of adhesion. However, if it is hydrophobic, even if the organized structure may be like a, wa a wall to stop the protein to touch the surface, it will may soon cover it and force it to m have some adhesion. But this is not empirical law, something that usually is observed. If we are with truly hydrophobic surfaces, what we'll have is an enhanced protein adhesion, while if it is hydrophilic, protein adhesion will be a little less, or almost impossible to happen. However, this is not absolute, because a protein usually have one hydrophilic and one hydrophobic part. So it's a general rule, but like all general rules in biomaterials, it has always a lot of exceptions.